Hi there, Internet family. Welcome to our Georgia Suburban Homestead on a muggy Tuesday evening. Uh, it's overcast, but so far, no rain. We need rain desperately here in Georgia. I am sitting in my tomato patch. I was so proud at my little tomatoes that I raised from seed. Uh, and we put them in the ground and nurtured them. <clears throat> vowed to come out and tie them up and give them things to climb. And then another homesteader decided to hold a meetup. And we decided to go and we just had a couple of weeks to prepare with, you know, business type stuff and buy a tent and whatever. So we ignored the tomatoes. Well, now that we're back in the tomato patch, it's way overgrown and I should have been trimming the bottoms to the vines. We quickly slapped up an A-frame trellis, which I'm about to show you. And I did come in and trim the lower leaves from the stalks. But now it's been a couple of weeks, or more like 10 days, and the tomatoes are really responding. And now I've got a mess. Instead of having airflow, where the tomatoes all responded with more growth, I've got like a really thick jungle, and I'm afraid that I'm going to get leaf spot and other fungus and bacteria problems uh, with lack of airflow. So there's another YouTube person that you might want to uh, turn into who's really nice. He's a nice guy. He's also in Georgia, but he really cuts his tomatoes back and uh, it's uh, our hands in the dirt. And I'm reaching out to him. I told him I'd do this video and uh, hopefully he'll comment in the comment section of this video on what he would suggest I do with these tomatoes. Do I go in and sacrifice fruit to increase uh, airflow and hope that the tomatoes rebound and set more fruit? Or do I keep it like it is? So let me give you a quick tour and then I'll show you the pepper bed that's coming along and my uh, tropical bed that's uh, the third bed here in the front yard that we started in November. Uh, that has uh, lemongrass, chives, galanga root, ginger, and turmeric in it. And uh, so I'll show you that as well. So here we go. First, you see all this fruit. This is where I was just sitting. See all those tomatoes? Got little tomatoes coming here. But look, as you start to get into the jungle, I planted these, the standard one tomato plant per foot and a half of garden space. Put in six feet tall trellises. And trained the tomatoes up up the up the trellis up twine. If you look at that one, it's almost reaching the top already and it's been less than ten days really since we tied it up. And it's loaded with fruit, low down. That's a black beauty. And we've done some companion planting. Look at those soon to be black tomatoes. If you look at the stems, you can tell I trimmed them. But look how all the foliage is filled in. It was open and breezy. It's such a problem, right? <laughs> overgrowth, over response. 
here. Blooming up a storm. Very happy, very healthy plants thus far. I don't know how to trellis this plant. It's a meow meow plant, isn't it, Brucey? You meow meow plant? Is this your garden? I think it is. My scotch bonnet bed. Coming along nicely. Yes, bugs have been eating the leaves, but you know, if there's nothing eating your garden, it's not part of the ecosystem. And we want our plants in our garden to be part of the ecosystem and not part of the problem killing the planet, right? So I'm going to have to come in here and tie some of these peppers up to their stakes. This is a real problem here. Yeah. Horseradish. You always have pollinator plants, and this is the milkweed starting to put on pods. These are milkweed pods. Lemongrass. Got some chives as a companion plant. Thank you, Brucey. You see the gin you see the gingers just breaking ground underneath other butterfly plants. This ginger is breaking ground a little bit faster. They all got planted at the same time. Sorry, the cat keeps bumping my hand. Turmeric hasn't come up yet, but it's there. And then we end, end this bed with uh, lemongrass. Got some more milkweed at the end to attract the pollinators. And they're pretty. There's a pollinator enjoying it now. Oh, we disturbed her. So what do you think I should do? Should I leave those tomatoes as they are? Uh, or should I thin them out and sacrifice some fruit? Weigh in down below. While you're weighing in down below and giving me your advice, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and join us on future videos. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.